Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Fire Emblem New Mystery the Emblem. In the last episode, we finished our treacherous path of Henri and officially made our way through the Ice Dragon Shrine. Overall, obtaining the Star Sphere and the Light Sphere from Godo, and also got teleported back to the lands of Altaeum with the help of Godo as well, which was really, really nice and also gained two new allies, Tiki and Zane, and I'm more than likely going to be using Zane over Roderick for the rest of the game, since, honestly, Zane is a character I want to know more about, since we got most of the supports for Roderick already, so there's not much more I can learn about him, so honestly, let's go on to the next character, since Zane is easily able to give us some more support. So, with that, all we know is we're now in Altaeum, we can now make the, uh, we have the ability to start working on making the Binding Shield, which is the official version of the Fire Emblem, which is all the Star, star Sphere, Light Sphere, Geosphere, Life Sphere, and Dark Sphere all placed into the shield, making the Binding Shield overall being the full version of the Fire Emblem. So, with that, all we know is we're going to an old chapter, and we also have the hairstyle of Tiki. So, with that, let's get into Chapter 15, Return of the Prince. And we're also going to be seeing Abel, because we did take a small look at the chapter at the end of the last episode. So, let's do this. Chapter 15, Return of the Prince. So, with that, I think we're already talking about being ready. My controller was literally not even on. So, let's do this. <laughs> into Chapter 15, Return of the Prince. Sorry for the random cut there. That was just because... After a video, I always pull out the battery pack in my Xbox controller to, honestly, just so I don't waste any battery. And I you, lately have been doing two, um, two episodes each day whenever I record. Not every single day. I usually take some breaks, but um, this week specifically on Sunday, I did two videos. And then on Monday, I did two videos. And now we're on Thursday, which I took like a couple day break to play um, Persona 5 Strikers, which is officially one of my favorite Actually, I think it's like my third favorite game on the Switch, and maybe even my second. It's actually really, really fun, and it's made me really want to get into Persona 5 once I eventually have the ability to play it, because I am thinking about getting a PlayStation 5 sometime around my birthday in August. So honestly, hopefully by then I'll be able to finally play through that. I don't know if we're going to do it for YouTube, for you guys, because I don't know if it's more of a YouTube game or more of a game you just play on your own. So, I'll honestly think about it once we get there, but as of this, we're officially into Chapter 15, so... Transported to Altea's outskirts by Godo's mighty warp magic, Martha and his army finally began the battle to liberate their homeland. However, General Abel... Abel, okay, I was thinking of um, Arlen because Arlen had a weird name, but no, that's a completely different character. General Abel, commander of the Arcanean army, ordered the Gross Knights to attack in order to buy time. In the meantime, he prepared his own device, Devious Tactics, with the aim of crushing the Altan army in one fell swoop. With their dear homeland before them, Martha and the others start yet another battle. Recapture Henri, our capital, and we shall now reclaim our, claim our homeland. Prince Mars' voice resounded through the serene skies of Altea, one of the objectives of their long and difficult journey was already within reach. And with that, we're officially in Chapter 15, and we also get to see Mars' reaction to our nice little headwear that we got in the last one, because we're wearing Tiki's hey, um, little headdress because Zane, the trickster, did a prank on us and basically told us, hey, you're going to become stronger if you wear Tiki's hairstyle and also her little headdress she wears. You'll have the legendary power of Tiki. Nope. <laughs> He's just playing a trick on us, 100%. But honestly, it's still funny to see it. It's actually not one of the worst hairstyles. It's actually one of my favorites, to be completely honest. I actually like her headdress. And honestly, it doesn't really look like a tiara to me. It looks more like a, um, what do you call it? I'm trying to think of what it is, but like a, um, a headdress that you would see on, like, a war battalion when it comes to someone like, like a knight. A knight would wear this, is what I'm kind of saying. Like, um... More of, like, anime nights, I guess you can say, but honestly, I see this, I can see this being a good, good headdress to wear during battle. But, honestly, I still like my bishop's hat, because it just fits more. But, honestly, it's still pretty cool. But, with that, let's actually continue this. Um, sire, the war council will begin soon. Oh, thank you, Spooks, but, huh? 
Oh, what happened to your hair? Um, Sir Zane did it for me? He said the legendary power would enter me if I wear this tiara. And this hairstyle complements it. Anything to become stronger. Hmm, legendary power. Oh, Zane's handiwork. I see. You can clearly, certainly be a handful. <laughs> Definitely so. But, we, as we saw, we actually don't have su any supports for this episode. It's literally just um the two ones for this chapter. So, first ones first. Let's do Abel. And then we'll get into the current status for chapter, chapter 15. Oh, what in blazes? Abel is among our enemies. Hmm, indeed, sire. Sadly, this is the inescapable truth. Um, sir, sire, Sir Yegan, what's going on? Hmm, spooks. I should tell you about Abel, too. Before your arrival, Abel was a knight of Altea and Cain's trusted partner. Afterwards, he retired to live together with Est and Altea, but now... Hmm. As you know, our army, enemy is Orkneyan army, and ha that has occupied Altea, and Abel is among their ranks. Um, what? In other words, he's now our enemy? Hmm. It would seem so, but who'd have guessed? It's simply unfathomable. That is weird. Sir Yegan, I'm not acquainted with Sir Abel, but I don't think someone who used to be a knight in Prince Mar's service would betray Altea without reason. There must be something going on. Hmm, yes indeed. Otherwise there is no way Abel would betray the prince. True, it would make no sense. I think it might be something to do with Est, because I know Est and Abel are betrothed to each other, based on what I know. So, maybe Est has been captured? But honestly, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Hmm, I think the same. Egan spooks. I'll try to talk to him. If I go... I'm sure Abel would tell me his reasons. Honestly, who knows? But let's get into our current status. Hmm. It was an arduous journey, like no other, but we can wave farewell to Henri's way. On the Ice Dragon Shrine, Prince Moth obtained the Light Sphere from Lord Goto, but also the Star Sphere since, um, for some reason I'm not bringing it up. <laughs> I'm just adding it because he didn't bring it up. With it, we can now challenge Hardin in his Dark Sphere. And now is the time for us to reclaim our homeland. And with that, we're officially re technically ready for Chapter 15. I'm going to go mess around with our inventories since there are certain things I don't want on, uh, on our units. And I also want to make sure that we don't have any broken weapons because we don't need our Wire Slayers anymore. So let's get rid of those and just throw it into the convoys. And then we also need to make sure everyone has the right weapons and things. So with that, I'll be right back and we'll be getting into Chapter 15 and literally half a second and I'll see you guys literally right after this. Okay and now with everyone with the items that they need I ended up making sure that Marth was the one holding the light sphere to get the nullification on terrain bonuses. Um, then I made sure to make sure Spooks had enough magic to deal with this chapter and also we kind of need to start upgrading his staff ranking since he does have the abilities to use them now. I also made sure to one, make sure she, um, Mauritia has a fire tome that's fully, like, basically fully fixed. But I also made sure she had a rescue staff, warp, and we also have this again staff, which I'm pretty sure is like a dance staff, basically. And then, of course, a heal, just in case. And then Luke, he has his armor slayer, which he got in the last one, so that's going to help us out with the generals on the map, which is honestly going to be very helpful. Honestly, nothing for Camus. Star Sphere went on, ended up going on to Cecile for the plus two because she needs it more than anyone else on her team. Fina really doesn't need it since we don't usually use her for fighting, but she can fight on her own if she needs to, if she does get attacked, so honestly it's good. Um, I ended up throwing, throwing one of our Lady Swords onto Catria since we have we do have three of them. One of them broke in the last episode on Cecile. But honestly, I think it would be smart to put one of those on her. And also the Iote Shield's going to be helpful for the Bowmans and also the Ballisticans on this map. Although it was already on her in the last chapter. But we didn't have to deal with anyone Bowman, any Bowmans in the last one, so we didn't really get to test it out. Um, Julian, I just threw an Armor Slayer onto him just to help him out. Um, Ryan threw a Silver Bow. And then, actually, no, we had that in the last one, I think, actually. I didn't use it. And then, of course, Ogma didn't change anything. And then for Zane, I ended up throwing a Steel Lance just in case if he turned into a class that needed to use um, lances instead of any kind of swords. Because he doesn't actually have any rankings in any of his classes. 
So technically, he can't even upgrade his weapon rank in the first place. So just making sure he has something just in case if he when if he does turn into a different unit. So because not all units can use swords and not all units can use lances. So if he turns into someone with no affinity of using any kind of swords, he's not just having a sword and no weapon to use. So just in case, I made sure of that. So with that, I think we're all ready. So let's honestly let's do this. I believe we have only one unit that is based on, um, we have to actually go out of our way to recruit and everyone else is already recruited. So the first one is Est, and then there's another character that's going to show up anytime now. But let's do this. Um, I'm sorry, Abel, it's all my phones. So we got Est, and we also have uh, Dolph. I forgot which one Dolph is. I think that's the one that was um, Dolph and Macalon, I think. I could be wrong, though. But other than that, let's continue. Hmm, General, the missing Altaian remnants. I have long last been sighted. Hmm, is that so? <laughs> How convenient. We will draw them in and be rid of them all at once. Hmm, understood. Well, what of that knight? Hmm, we need Abel. Should it look, should it look us as though he intends to betray us? <laughs> Kill the hostage. Besides, he has nothing but a deserter. It's far too late for him to pledge loyalty to his prince again. <laughs> now the table is their enemy. How will they fight? This should be quite the show. <laughs> Honestly, it does seem like it's going to be quite the show. And, okay, so I was right. It was the one that was with Macalon. So where's Macalon if we get Dolph? Because both of them were together originally. But now we don't. We don't, now we have one and not the other. It's actually kind of weird to see uh, Dolt by himself. But let's get into this. Prince Marth, I have been waiting for you, and you have finally arrived. Oh, Dolt, you're a general of Alcnea, though. Why would you come to my side? Uh, I've given up my position and have left Arm for a hard inside. But there is no justice left in Ar Ar Arcnea. But justice lies in your Altea, and that's why I've come to you. Um, I see. Then, Dolph, will you fight for with us? Hmm, indeed I shall. Let this battle be a testament to my faith in you. <laughs> so that's why. I actually completely forgot that Macalon was part of the Arcanean army. So that makes sense why Macalon's not here. So now Dolph and Macalon are basically rivals of this- Or, well, I'm pretty sure they were rivals to begin with. But now they're actually against each other. Which could be seen as a bad thing since both of them seemed pretty chill with each other before, but... Honestly, I'm not sure what we're going to do here. Okay, so based on what I see we can do here, let's turn um, Zane into Camus, since honestly it's the smarter choice here, since Camus has some decent stats to work with. Um, he could have turned into Luke, because Luke has that um, 18 defense, which would have been nicer to have, but I like the 22 strength from uh, Camus here, because honestly it's just smarter to use. Other than that... Um, based on what I can see, we need to make our way left side of the map, but we also need to make our way left right side of the map at the same time in order to do like a pincer attack, since Marth has to make his way left for the villages. So, first off first, let's do the village, um, the little house here, just to close it off, and usually we go through all through all the ones we can get to, so honestly, let's see what's going on here. Hmm, apparently the hordes of enemy soldiers waiting in the fortresses. This ain't the time to let your guard down. Okay, so there's reinforcements. Good to know. So these fortresses have people in them. Good to know, because usually half the time we get caught off guard with that. So good thing we know that now. Since we have Dolph, let's actually block off most of that. We do have to worry about Ballistikins, so we do need to make sure we're careful with these. I do have an idea here, though. We can run over here, use Catria to get rid of one of these, and then we can actually use our again staff here and run Catria right out of the range of the Ballisticans, and also out of the range of Abel, so we don't have to accidentally knock him out here. So HP, Luck, and Defense, not a bad level. And let's actually test this. So based on what I can guess, I was thinking that's how it is. Do I have to be, like, close range? A stat that allows allies to move again. Um, why does it not let me use it, though? Can I not use it on her? Is there a reason for this, or... She's B-rank, she's more than B-rank, that's weird. 
and it's infinite range. So, okay then. I guess we'll figure that out later. Okay, so first off first, let's make sure that we're dealing with um, left side of the map real quick, just so everyone's kind of in position. And also, we're kind of getting ready to go and save Est as well, because we need to get Est out of this area, since she's kind of stuck in here with no weapon. And it, I don't know if this guy's going to randomly start attacking me, so I'm not even going to move S just in case. And then, other than that, I can say we can move Spooks on left side, move Ryan on right side, move Julian on right side since we need him to open up the doors. Mauricia, honestly, I'm going to see if maybe um, just being in a good spot might do us good here, but it looks like I can't just do that. Okay, just because Katria is still in a weird spot and my dancing thing doesn't seem to work, I'm just going to teleport her in a safe spot instead. And then we'll try and figure out from there. And then other than that, um, let's see here. I guess move Zane into position so he's not in, like, in a weird spot here. So he's ready to help out the others on the right side. I think this should be a decent way to end this turn, so since I don't know if we should move S or not, let's not even worry about that, and let's just enter and see what happens. Okay, other than that, we just have the Ballisticans, and they're using a 7 damage Thunderbolt, so it looks like magic damage is Thunderbolt in this game, because I think that was how it was in the original, I don't actually remember. I remember Thunderbolt being much stronger, that's all I remember. I think it was like 30 damage or something like that. It was. I know Pachyderm was really strong. But other than that, I'm honestly at a loss. Ooh, you have a Rider's Bane. Oh my goodness, I did not even notice that on the map. And, um, Cecile, that was actually one of the worst things you could have done there, actually. Well, um, Cecile's gonna end up going down unless she dodges. Nope, she didn't dodge. And that's why you scout maps. And now I feel even stupider, because this is like the fifth time Cecile's went down because of me doing something stupid. Cool. <laughs> Well, sorry, Cecile, that's actually, like, 100% my fault. I literally didn't even notice there was a Rider's Bane, because we even really ran into any on the maps. And actually, um, in the original, um, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, um, in the Blade of Light, the Rider's Banes actually weren't that strong, so honestly, um, I completely forgot about how much damage Rider's Banes did, to be honest, so I didn't actually expect to get hit by one of those, because we were actually tanking Rider's Banes in the original. So honestly, I didn't actually expect to take too much damage as we did there, in all fairness. So honestly, I guess that's more of the reason why I didn't even look to see if there was one, to be completely honest. But I still feel stupid in a way, because I should have noticed that, but honestly, I don't take too much um, into account of actually scouting maps. I more of just make sure we have the items ready, and that's about it. Um, other than that, I don't think that's like the best position for Ogma to run into. But we can throw Dolph right here. And let's see here. I'm trying to think of how we can get rid of this Ballistican so we don't have to deal with long range. And then um, it's just to get them off the field and then we don't have to deal with them. Thankfully, Catra doesn't waste too many um, durability here. Because durability is important. Okay, cool. That actually works out perfectly. Okay. Well, best thing I can kind of see here is we can work on the guy with the, um... Actually, where even is he? Oh, we got we got rid of him. Okay, so even though he did... Okay, so... We could have gotten lucky there and dodged that 50% hit chance, but... Didn't end up happening. But let's not break his durability, so let's make sure to keep the Silver Lance in the best pos position that we can get it in. So, honestly, the best thing we could have done there is just use Ryan to get that since then he wouldn't waste any durability on that Silver Lance. Other than that, um, we do have some Silver Bows we need to get through. We also have Julian that can help out here, so is there anyone else I need to know about? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So Julian, you're going to go for the one with the Silver Bows, since they can't attack you back, and then we don't have to worry about you taking random damage here. So honestly, those are the best things for him to deal with. And then I'm thinking Zane for the other Bowman. So which one's the other one? Okay. Just making sure we're using the right units here and not doing this in the worst way because Zane is a little low because of the fact that he doesn't gain the HP that the enemies or that the imitation units already have. He starts with his normal HP and then you basically have to heal him up to where he's actually max, ma er, not max, I'm trying to say it in the right way. 
matching the allies that he's turned into. Okay, I think Luke here would be smart. And then... Honestly, I'm not sure how we're gonna actually get Est out of there in a good way. But I guess we'll find out in a second. Um, let's see here. We can throw away the Iron Sword for now and just hold on to the Steel Sword. And we can maybe use that later. And then we can just run Camus into this guy and just get rid of him. What's the best one we can use? It looks like one durability of a Steel Lance is the best option. Wow, I really feel bad about knocking out units out like that. That's really not even intended. It's just like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's entirely it. If I noticed that there was a Rider's Bane, I would have never done that movement, to be completely honest. And that just happened to happen. And it just it just sucks sometimes when I do something stupid like that, because that's not even intended at all. And it just happens. Okay, other than that, um let's run Oh here we go. Now the again staff's working. Why is it working now? Huh, okay. Well use the again staff on Catria. And now we can actually use the staff. I don't know why it wasn't working earlier, but Let's see here, how much damage do these guys do? Seven, two, four. Okay, so Catri is safe to go right side, or left side. And then we can run in. Well, it doesn't even matter. As long as we hit twice, we're fine here. So what's the best one we can use? Just so we don't waste any durability here. It's either the Lady Sword, it's the Steel Lance, it looks like. Okay, so Steel Lance for Catria here seems like a good idea. Then we can get rid of the Steel Bow user. And then we can run in safely, now that we don't have to worry about getting sniped randomly by that guy. Other than that, it seems like that's pretty much everyone we can move right now, other than Mauricia maybe healing up Zane just to help him out. Because Zane does need to kind of like get a full heal here if he wants to do anything. Oh, we can use again staff again if we really wanted to, but heal staff is better here in this in this instance. Okay. Other than that, in turn, it looks like S isn't going to be attacked, so that's good. So we can kind of figure out what we want to do here. So thankfully, that's a good thing for us, because honestly, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with that. And Dolph actually doubles these guys. That's good. So we don't have to worry about Dolph getting, like, <laughs> destroyed by these knights here. Because honestly, um, I wasn't sure on how tanky Dolph was. I kind of just threw him there, just kind of throw him there to block any kind of damage Spooks could have took there. Because Spooks is game over if he gets knocked out, so... Looks like, yeah, he would have been fine. He might get doubled here by this, um, mage, but maybe not. Actually, no. That's actually surprising. Okay, we're thankfully Marth was able to get to this site actually first. Because we did have to kind of race, race here against those, um, thieves that are making their way over here right now. Honestly, that's not the worst thing if we got hit there. I wasn't sure if we were going to get hit or not, but it, we ended up getting hit. Which is kind of bad in a way, but kind of not bad in a way. As long as we don't take like too much damage and there's not too many enemies around us. Like the Ballisticans are gone, so we don't need to worry. Um, when it comes to these thieves, are they using long-range weapons? No, they're using short-range and he also has an extra rapier for us. Is there any way we can whack him and not waste any durability? Okay. Steel Lance here is the best option, so... Go for that, knock him out in one hit, and save some durability, and also get a level for Catria. Okay, skill and luck. Mm, could have been better. And then throw the rapier for later, so we can use that and convoy up another one if this rapier ends up ever breaking. Um, Ogma, I'm gonna have you... I wish we can use our enemy, our allies to actually go and take over these um, villages to kind of close them up so Marth didn't have to do this. That's the only problem here is that Marth has to do all that. And since Marisha is on the other side of the map, I'm just going to use my Vulnerary just in case. I could have used my heal, actually. That would have been smarter. But, eh. It's, it honestly, it just works. Okay, how do we um, pull this sniper over? Because that's what I want. Okay, the easiest way to do so is to put you here and then heal Ryan. No, I don't want to use the again staff, please. I don't want to use that. I just want to use my... Please stop. Okay, this is the hardest thing to actually heal the person next to me. There we go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, other than that, I'm not sure what I want to do there. I guess just end turn here, because honestly, I don't know what I want to do yet on right side. End turn, and honestly, let's see what happens. We went from 33 enemies earlier, so 
we dropped quite a bit of them. There's only like 19 left. That means we're pretty much ready to actually completely and utterly shred this en the enemy forces. Other than the re reinforcements that we did hear about. Since we haven't seen them yet, but we'll eventually will see them at some point, I would believe. But let's check out what's going on in these villages, since this is where we would have seen, um, where we saw Samson and, um, Aaron. But we ended up picking, uh, Samson, so the other village was blocked off to us in the original when it came to this chapter. Because this is the same chapter that you could have recruited Aaron, Samson, and Zane. But this was one of those ones that you could choose either Aaron, if you choose the left village, or choose Samson if you chose the right village. And if you chose either one, the other one would close up and you couldn't help, uh, couldn't get them on your army. But for some reason, both Samson and Aaron are both recruitable in this game. So it's actually kind of weird. But honestly, it's kind of cool to see both of them on the same army. So now you don't know which one's... Well, you, technically you do because Aaron's the um, early recruit. So Aaron's the um, cannon person for or Marth to actually choose. And then he eventually ends up being able to actually get Samson as well, based on the uh, reinforce or not reinforcements, um, based on the units that I've seen in the playable characters, because there's quite a bit of them. And honestly, I like the um, the how big the cast is, because you can actually choose any unit you want, and you'll always be able to choose someone you like. So honestly, any playthrough you find somebody you want to play as, and honestly, yeah, that's pretty cool to see. But let's see what's going on with the village here. Hmm. So you came. Prince Moth, I've been waiting to deliver this to you. There's always been bad blood between our village and the next one over. They'll have closed the gates to you the moment they saw you come here. No need to worry though, we've got better offerings than them. Oh, it's the same thing? Well, honestly, energy drop is not bad in any case whatsoever, but at least we don't have to go to both villages, which is honestly better here. So it's the same way then as the original one. Which, honestly, I like it, because it's con continuity. Continuity. That it's, um, it's like following the original story, because the original story, you weren't able to go to both villages, and you had to choose. So that's actually kind of cool, and also, sorry for pressing the button next to him. Extra, um, I'm trying to think of the words. Well, I pressed it too, too hard and it ended up, like, springing back up, and I'm pretty sure you were able to hear that in the recording, <laughs> I'll be honest, but... I try not to do that, but sometimes it just happens. There's so many there's so many things that it comes into um, when it comes to recording. You just can't stop everything that happens in a recording. Okay, so the best thing I can think of doing here is running Camus in here, using uh, the Steel Lance, doubling this knight. I'm trying to make it sure that we don't get randomly attacked by reinforcements here, but also make our way into um, saving Est here in a second. So the best way to do this is, I think, Camus here, then running Lucan at full charge right into the sky, one-shotting this mage, and then, honestly, we might be able to um, double someone's movement here and knock out the other knight here. What is the knight holding? He's holding a javelin, so it's not anything dangerous. So we can run Zane closer in this instance, and then run F uh, Fina in, do a dance, and then have Zane run right into this knight, maybe getting rid of him. The best one here seems to be the Steel Lance here, but honestly, Steel Sword's just smarter here because, well, it's, I don't know. I, well, actually, there's, that was the answer. We ended up getting a crit and only wasting one durability instead of two. Not bad. Okay. I'll take that. I mean, it's honestly better than anything else that could have happened there. Okay, we're going to need Julian to open up that door, so let's get him ready in a second. And then S is going to run for it as soon as that door opens. And then other than that, that is the last person on field, so let's end turn and see what happens here. Oh, only one person's making their way towards us, so we're perfectly safe to go anywhere we want. Perfect. Other than that, um, I'm actually going to have Mars start running through the water here, because... Although, technically, we don't need to do this, it's just, it's easier to deal with this map if we kind of, like, split up into three groups now. Because, honestly, we could do this any way we need to at this point. Um, honestly, I see a free level in Ogma's future here, so let's go here. Use Ogma to use his Iron Axe here to get some two free points on his Axe Growths. 
since we kind of need him to get to the second level to actually be able to use Steel Axes, since Axes are very strong in Fire Emblem, so I would eventually I would like to be able to use these anytime I want. And talking about Axes, I got a Silver Axe out of that. Cool. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, I don't think we need Dolph to chase us down here, so I'm going to actually have him do a free save here, just to save our progress so we don't worry about anything here. And then other than that... What I see in our future here is dooring this door open, running Est out of here as fast as possible so she doesn't get attacked by this general, because I'm pretty sure he's going to start moving now. Um, then we can run Zane in here, use his armor slayer, get rid of this guy completely, and steal his killer lance off of him, and then we can use that ourselves later. So honestly, that's actually a really good movement here. Not bad, not bad. Then we can use that killer lance for... Maybe a Cecile or something, I don't know. Anyone that has, like, high crit chance would be probably really good. And actually, that was not a bad level there, actually. I'm gonna throw that in Convoy, though. So it looks like we got Strength, Skill, Speed, and Luck, I think. I didn't read it specifically, but it looks like that's what it was. Okay. Other than that, I don't think Ryan can go over water. And I don't think that's possible for him in his future. So the best thing I can think of here... Is running Ryan in? Is there any Ballisticans, like, anymore? Unfield or... What is going on here? Oh, it's a Swarm user. Oh, that is actually really bad. Okay. So, what we need to do here... Honestly, the best thing I can think of doing here is just, um... Healing Camus. Just to full, just in case. Because we might need him to tank here in a second. Then we can maybe go here. Throw on the Javelin and take out two units that come over here, this mage and maybe even this killer bow user here. That would be nice. And then other than that, um, honestly just do a free dance on Marisha, I guess. Actually no, I need full range for F um, Fina here. So just do a free dance on Camus there, I guess. Then run Zane here, I guess. Okay, right side's done and left side is done. So let's enter and let's see what we got. So, because I don't want to get attacked too much by the Swarm user, because I wasn't sure what our resistance was looking like when it comes to Swarm. So it looks like we don't have to worry about Swarm users anymore, because they were doing like 20 damage before. And it looks like we get a free Javelin on this guy, so down goes one. Now we just need to get rid of the Sniper. Hopefully he can make his way over here. Is he in range? I don't think he is or not. Oh, he actually is. He got a 22% crit chance with a 3 damage. <laughs> Good crit, but honestly, you ended up going down anyways. So, bye-bye. There's another killer bow for Ryan. Cool, cool. Okay. Oh, Marth can't walk through water anymore. What? I just walked through water, like, literally, like, the last chapter when we were in, um, chapter 13 with the, um, the outside of the Ice Dragon Shrine. What? Okay, I guess I can't walk on water anymore. That's strange. Okay, well... The only thing I can think I'm doing here is running Est in, having your Insta Recruit able, teleporting her out, and then running able into one of these um, healers over here and getting him out of range. I think that's the only way I can think of doing this correctly. Okay, other than that, we can run... What's the best way to do this? Where's Fina's like, final range? Fina's final range is right here, so Julian, you go there, then you're going to dance Julian so he can move again, and then he's going to open the door, and then uh, Luke can probably make his way to the Swarm user, maybe. Yep, he can. Perfect. Okay, and then he's just going to steal Sword for one one durability to just save on uh, durability here, and get rid of the Swarm user so we don't have to deal with him anymore, because long-range magic does kind of get in the way sometimes. Okay, other than that, um, can I turn into Fina? I can! Okay, I might end up doing that, and that makes us have two dancers instead. I'm gonna skip through the, through the animation, since basically it's just him turning into Fina. Strength and... honestly not bad. Okay, other than that, keep running Ryan through. And honestly, the rest of our army just needs to keep moving, because there's no way they can do much there. Okay, and then just keep Marisha over here, because we're gonna do something in a second. Okay, other than that, let's have Katria ready, because we're going to also have her get rid of- we're going to snipe two people out once we get the chance. Okay, other than that, 
I see... Let's heal um, Ogma here for a free stack in, um, in our little staffs, trying to get to D rank in staffs. And then run Ogma in. Um, go for... Hmm, Steel Sword drops him down to 40% hit chance. So, honestly, this seems like the best way to do this. And also, Ogma has 48 HP, so I don't think he's going to get one turned here. It's basically impossible, based on what I can see here. So I think we'll be fine to do this. Okay, we got a Steel Axe. I'll take that. I'm going to throw the Silver Axe, because eventually Ogma's going to be able to use that Steel Axe sometime soon. I would think by the end of that um, charge of the Iron Axe, I think we'll be fine. Other than that, um, we need to move Dolph, just so he doesn't get randomly attacked by the reinforcements that might appear. So, let's just be careful. Okay, Hand Axe only does 3 damage, and then this Magician's not going to do much. Yeah, 8 damage, so yeah. Ogma would have only taken 11 damage during this turn, so we didn't have to worry. And there's our reinforcements! Okay, um, I'm going to get out of here before I get um, literally um, sniped by one of those guys. Okay, other than that, um, move Dolph as far as he can go, because I don't need him getting sniped randomly. Um, honestly, Ogma's fine here by himself, so Ogma, I guess you can start dealing with these guys. Let's just one-tap this um, guy that can actually do damage to us, and then we can run, um... Honestly, I'm not sure what I want to do. Ooh, door key, that's the first one we've seen in the game. Um, other than that, throw um, Spooks here, full heal Marth, because it's just safer for Marth to run in there with full HP and not any kind of HP. Okay, other than that... We can run Esten, since S can talk to Abel here, so let's do this. Talk to Abel real quick. Um, Abel, I'm sorry. It hurt, didn't it? Um, Est, thank heavens you're safe. Um, yeah, Prince Mars saved me. You don't have to fight anymore. It's okay now. I'm safe. Hmm, I see. Those blasted Orkneans. How can I possibly make it up to Prince Moth? Um, I'm so sorry, Abel. It's all my fault. Hmm, no, Est. That's not true. It was those Arcanaeans. I won't forgive them. I'll show them the true meaning of pain. And with that, we officially now have Abel. So, based on uh, S having any kind of weapons, we're going to be careful here. So, what I wanted to do was I wanted to run in one of these guys. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to run in both of these healers so they can't do any long-range magic anymore for healing. And that'll kind of make it easier for us to deal with everything else. And then we can run um, Katria into the other one, get rid of this one as well, making it ten times easier to deal with this map as well. And then Steel Lance is the easiest option here. And then, based on what I wanted to do, I want to use the um, Rescue Staff, or... Honestly, I think a Rescue Staff was basically what we should do. Because, yeah, this guy's got a Silver Bow and one shot test. So, it's the only possible thing we can possibly do here. I don't want to use that one, I want to use the Rescue Staff instead. Because Rescue Staff is just smarter in the end here. Hmm. Not the worst possible position, because this guy doesn't do much there. Oh, wait, generals can hold air. Oh, really? That's different. Generals can use bows in this game. Huh. I, well, I saw him using a bow, but I didn't notice he was a general. I thought he was like a different class. Whoa, that's actually kind of cool. Too bad we don't have any gen generals that we're using for our story this time around. That would actually have been pretty cool to use. Okay, um, other than that, right side of the map needs to be um, kind of focused on. Based on what I can see here, there's only one of these guys, so let's just get rid of him. Oh, he's got a Rider's Bane. Mm, honestly, he's all by himself, though. So let's just get rid of this guy. Since 17 damage um, without a follow-up um, person to actually deal the rest of the damage actually isn't bad here. So thankfully Luke's fine. Okay, other than that, Julian, max range as far as you can go, bud. Other than that, Ryan, same as that. Um, honestly, just keep moving everyone. <laughs> we just need to keep making our way towards the middle. And let's see if we can double dance here. I don't know if we can possibly do that in this game, but if we can, that'd be good. Does not look like so. Okay, so now we know about that, but let's just keep moving Zane and Vina, because that'll help us out. Okay, now we got this guy over here. He does 15 damage, but he also had the chance to crit us there, and he doesn't double, thankfully, so we're perfectly safe. And he's also in a perfectly um, perfect position for us, due to the fact that he just outpositioned himself, because now that he's right there, we can actually use um, Marisha 
to do the rest of the damage we need to do. Which is actually perfect. Okay, I'll take that. And then we also have the reinforcements chasing us down though, which is also bad, but we can possibly think of something. Let's see, are any more Rider's Banes we need to deal with? Nope, everyone's normal. Okay, and Steel Bow won't do anything to us, or Silver Bow won't do anything to Catria. So we're perfectly fine to move her over here. Other than that, um, Silver Lance. Just take no damage, just in case. Because I don't know how much damage these guys are going to do, so let's just make sure we don't take too much damage this turn. Okay, not bad. And then Abel's fine where he is for now. And then, other than that, let's use Marisha to... That's not enough damage, but... Eh, we could do some damage here. Two fireballs will be decent damage here. And then we can kind of figure out from there what we want to do for the rest. Okay, there goes another level for Marisha, which is always good. Magic, HP, skill, speed, and luck. Not bad. I need as much magic as we possibly can get for her if she wants to actually fight. Um, Abel doesn't one-shot these guys, so we don't need to do that. I'm also going to run S as far away as possible from the ocean there. Okay. I want to see if we can use Dance with Zane, because I don't have a for sure way of telling. It looks like, no. Okay, so Zane can't dance. Good to know. That's actually really good to know, because I wasn't too sure when it came to that. Um, don't save yet, because we actually still have more movements to do here. Okay, move Camus and Luke both topside so we can start helping out with the actual boss in the middle head, middle area. And then, honestly, hmm, trying to think of what we should do here. It looks like move Julian here, then use our Dance with Fina here, use him on Ryan, and then we can use the save on Ryan, and then we can, I think, end turn here is left side, no, left side's not dealt with yet, so we'll do that after this. I'm just making sure what we're doing here. Sorry, there's like so much things to get off my mind right here, because there's so many, like, um, so much to manage here to make sure that we make sure everyone's making it to where we need them to be. Okay. And once we actually get everyone off the field, we'll end up doing a, um, a little skip to the throne like we did in the previous chapter. Other than that, I don't really see anything else we can do, so Abel go there, and... Ryan, you make your way to the save point, and let's save on this chapter. So... We have a nice area to kind of like leave off with for now, just so we don't have to worry about um, anyone getting game overed and then we can just reload from there. Honestly, that's the easiest way to do this instead of just making more and more quick saves because I don't like doing quick saves. We did that in the original one and it kind of felt like weird, but where there's actual like straight up saving areas is actually pretty cool and that's the worst level I've ever gotten with Katria. Literally nothing. Wow. And, wow, the IO shield actually completely downgraded the damage we took there. Oh, and, okay, so, reinforcements spawn every ch every turn. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit dodgy, but thankfully Ryan is able to double this guy. I was, I was highly, I was, I kind of felt like he was gonna double this guy, because usually paladins don't have, or, like, any attack speed, so honestly I didn't have to worry there. Okay, other than that, move Zane forward. Can she dance Zane, then? She can. Okay, that's good to know. We don't need to, but that's actually good to know just in case. Run, Ryan. Actually, I see a position here. Move Luke here. Have Luke get rid of this silver bow user. And then we're going to run Ryan right into the other one, which will then make it easier for Camus to run straight through to the uh, where the boss is hiding. And also be able to kind of help out Abel on the other side as well. HP, strength, skill, speed, and luck. Not bad. I like the luck gains. L luck gains are actually very helpful. Let's see here. We can one-shot with Silver Bow here, so let's just do that. Just make it safe. And we also got the Style Point Crit Knockout. <laughs> I like it whenever we get the Style Points. Okay, another level 4 Ryan. Always good to see. One skill. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible, but eh, what are we going to do? Okay, best thing I can see here is javelining this guy, getting the general off the field, because the general is the only thing we really need to worry about here. And then we can kind of just tank this guy, because these guys can't really fight Abel. Their only reason why I didn't go attack him last turn was because I just didn't want the general to start attacking us, so it actually works out perfectly. Then we can, um, honestly, we could pull out the javelin here, and then we can start dealing with these guys. So honestly... Get rid of the Bowman since he does more damage, I guess. 
and then we'll figure out what to do with Castra next turn, since she's definitely going to get rid of the mage, and then the other reinforcements are going to make their way here next turn. And he's definitely going to attack us next turn as well, so we're going to have two problems. But Katri is fine because she can just fly away and we will be perfectly fine to do what we want, honestly. Okay, other than that, just keep moving everyone. Just make sure they're nowhere near those reinforcements. Because then we can kind of make our way around and figure out what we want to do. Okay. Well, other thing we can do is just run Ogma towards the bridge. And then Julian, I guess he can make his way over here. And honestly, I think that's our turn, because no one else can really do anything here, other than maybe Marisha healing um, S tier, but honestly, other than that, there's really nothing we can do. Okay, I think that's a perfect turn, and let's see how the eight, eight enemies left on the field deal with us, because if the 33 weren't able to get rid of us, I highly doubt the eight enemies on field, now seven, are going to be able to do anything to us now. At this point, they only got rid of one of us, and the rest of them have been pretty much slaughtered at this point. And then Abel's gonna get rid of this guy, leaving them with only six. Unless they get reinforcements again this, uh, this turn, but honestly, I don't know. They might, it would help them, but I'm gonna say they probably won't. And actually, Katri is really tanky, isn't she? She's only taking two damage from Steel Lances now. That's actually really, really good. Okay, cool. I'm very happy that we ended up using Katria too. Because Katria is one of my is the fav is my favorite on the White Wings, so like I said before, so it's actually really cool to actually play use her and actually like learn how to actually use her in this game. Because we used Kata in the original, and I didn't really have too much fun until like later game. Okay, based on what I can see here, we can get a free um, double on this guy. So let's use Ryan here and start whittling down Abel here or Ebel. And see if we can maybe get a free crit here and just knock him out this turn. Damn it! You're not human. No human can c defeat my mighty army. <laughs> well, uh, honestly, a couple of them aren't human, and there's our crit. I told you. I had a feeling. How could Orkneya be defeated? Ugh. And down goes Abel. See you later, buddy, or Ebel. I don't know how you say him, because it's basically Abel, but with an E and an I instead. Okay. Let's see here. Julian gets a free level here, so let's just go for that. I'm just going to take that. That's basically free. Okay, other than that, um, honestly, this chapter is basically over. Other than the reinforcements spawning behind me, I think we can actually just do a small skip here until I get to the throne, because I don't think you guys want to watch me get chased by these reinforcements, and honestly, I might just have someone ram right into them and just get rid of all three of them, because honestly, I think that's the rest of the reinforcements. So, with that, I'll be right back, and I'll see you all at the throne room. So, be me, boys and girls. Okay, now that Mart's actually at the throne room, and not on the other side of the map, and we're actually able to go and seize the throne room now, because we did have the reinforcements kind of chasing us down, and it looks like those were the last three. I ended up giving Ogma and Spooks those experiences, by the way, if you're wondering. Ogma's on level 4, and Spooks is now level 7 with 76 experience, which is pretty nice. Um, honestly, I might end up using the arena this chapter in between episodes, because one, I want to actually be able to buy items. I have not been able to buy items this entire game, and I'm going to actually farm up some money, so I'm going to probably end up using Zane, since his levels don't really matter, because we end up turning him into, into other characters and he can't even use weapon ranks. So the only way we can actually use him to our advantage is literally turn him into somebody and then just gain free stats, basically. And then we can use him to farm up some gold in the arena, because I would like to have some money for the fir first time this game. And the only time I've ever had money was when I had bullions. And you literally don't even get free money during chapters. It's literally just the bullions you get. And although I have 10,000 gold right now, I don't know how long I'm going to have that for. So I'm going to kind of grind it out a little bit, get some free gold so we can actually buy items. Because I've been using like iron weapons and items we've been grabbing off of units we've recruited throughout the entire adventure for the entire game. So yeah, I think, I, I think it's about time that I get to... At least get some money so we can actually do something with our money for once and actually buy some stuff other than using it for making sure units aren't far behind. So with that, let's end up seizing the castle and let's do this. And we're officially done with chapter 15 and officially have seized Altea for Altea instead of Arcnea. And there we go. Perfect. Hmm. 
But was a tough battle. Is everyone all right? Hmm. Don't worry, sire. Everybody ha was eagerly has eagerly awaited this day. Um, Sir Egan speaks truly. We've been fighting for this day, the day we reclaim our homeland. Hmm. Yet so many in innocent lives have been stolen by Arknea. No apology is worthy for them. I've caused them great sorrow because of my unreliability. Was I presumptuous in believing I could protect my homeland? Um, sire, do you remember, sire, the words you said to us on the very first day of, of our training? Hmm, spooks, I of course I could never forget. And actually, I kind of forget that was, alone I am powerless, so everyone from now on, I want you to lend me your power as my knights. <laughs> okay, now I kind of remember. It was basically quite a bit ago, honestly. His, we are on literally episode 21, so it makes sense I would forget that. That's literally like episode 1, so 20 episodes ago. Basically, for you guys, um, basically a month ago. Because <laughs> we do 5, day, five uh, episodes a week, so yeah. It's been quite a bit since I've seen that, to be honest. But, let's see here. Um, upon hearing your words, I decided I would become your strength, sire. I wish to be your sword. There is no need for you to shoulder your burden alone. Your pain and your suffering do not let them be yours to bear alone. I will always be by your side. Hmm, spooks. Sire, chin up. We must have still recapture Altea Castle. Oh, so we still need to actually fight the people inside. Okay, so technically, although we did recapture Altea, it's going to be kind of like a rerun of the original game when we when we eventually got here during the original version of this chapter, all the way back in Shadow Dragon and Blade of Lights. Well, this is basically a rerun, but in a different way for the sequel game. But in the original one, this um, this map. You basically did this map, and then you did um, inside the Altea Castle and recaptured it. So it's basically the same thing around. That's actually kind of cool, I guess, but it's kind of like more like a nostalgia kind of two chapters, based on what I can see here. Hmm. I believe that our enemies are well prepared for us, but it's our castle. We know better than they do. So, sire, give us the command. We will fight to recover your home. And with that, we're officially technically into chapter 16. Wow. I'm actually very surprised. We're getting into the final two um, side story chapters, too. Literally 16x and 20x are the final two. And based on how they've been going, we're more than likely going to see Katarina in the next one. And then I'm going to say we'll see Amira in the last one. Or maybe even Garnef, because apparently Garnef's still alive somewhere. And we haven't even seen him yet, so... Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen there. But other than that, let's see how our um, headdress is going to end up, because... This is definitely about, yeah, the tiara. I didn't even read the dialogue yet. Hmm. By the way, Spooks, about your old tiara. Did it work? Did you feel the, uh, legendary power? Uh, no. I didn't feel any different. Hmm. As I suspected, Spooks, I believe Zane pulled a fast one on you. I kind of felt like that, honestly. Is, is that so? Hmm. In the light of this, would you like to return your hair to the way it was before? Uh, yes. <laughs> Just gonna be honest, I like my hairstyle. I like the headdress, but honestly, I really like the um, bishop's hat. I really do like that style, because it honestly fits the sage aesthetic, since we are technically a bishop in a way, since although we are sorcerer, we still have the ability to use staffs and stuff, so honestly, it's nice to have the bishop's cap, because it kind of fits the class, to be honest. But other than that, um, yeah, thank you. Hmm, good. I'm glad we sorted that out. And with that, we're officially done with chapter 15, and we're in basically endgame mode. Because we have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And then, uh, extra story 1, extra story 2. Basically that. We're basically almost done. Just like that. And with that, Thank you all for watching today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And in the next one, it looks like we're going to be reclaiming Altea's castle. And maybe we might see someone that looks familiar in the next one, honestly. I don't know. So, with that, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Hey, boys and girls. Thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. 
If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.